in my last two videos i've talked about some upcoming potential changes to rise of kingdoms that seem to be pretty controversial in the community and this information comes from their most recent la player meetup where the developers revealed that they're considering adding a new tier of unit past tier five they've talked about vip 19 commander resets and it's been a whole mixed bag over the past few days of feedback that i have seen on my comments from people who are loving these things or hating these things and so truly i do think that these are some of the biggest and most controversial changes that could be coming to rise of kingdoms and then this morning i woke up and it seems like the developers sort of confirmed everything so that's what we're going to take a look at today but first what's going on guys cheers now if you appreciate breaking news videos for rise of kingdoms please drop a thumbs up it helps out the channel a ton okay now this information comes from the official rise of kingdoms discord channel they say the la community gathering developer feedback governors during the la community gathering on august 3rd 2024 our producer addressed some of the frequently asked questions below is a recap of the q and a session i'm so glad that they released this because some people in my comment section were saying omniarch i don't think you got this right or i don't think that you interpreted this correctly or that's not what they said they said this and now we don't have to question any of that okay we literally just get to read exactly what they are planning question one what is planned for the future of the game commanders civilizations etc battle gameplay the battle gameplay might introduce new mechanisms similar to ranged combat and new maps and gameplay brought by era evolution there will be more diverse commander styles similar to commanders with smite damage certainly we will continuously explore ways for new gaming experiences so this is huge i mean this is so vague that this basically just says that we are looking at expanding pretty much every part of the gameplay in rise of kingdoms right new mechanisms similar to ranged combat is just i mean that could be anything right so it might not just be ranged it might not just be melee but there could be a third or fourth type of combat i have no idea what that could be new maps so that could be kvk or that could be other things perhaps like new arc of osiris maps or new champions of olympia maps and gameplay brought by era evolution and we talked about the possibility of them adding guns to the game which i think after skimming this is pretty much 100 percent confirmed so stay tuned we'll talk about that also smite damage this was a big introduction it seems like things aren't going to stop there they may continue to add more types of damage in the future which i personally think would be cool i think the more variation in in types of damage the better because for the first like five years of rise of kingdoms life we had just skill damage skill damage skill damage skill damage and so i'm happy about that new civilization we will introduce a brand new civilization in early 2025 okay so we have an updated timeline i thought that they were going to go for the end of this year they're saying early 2025 i assume that's quarter one so i assume between january and march of 2025 that's what i suspect will be the release window for this new civ hopefully it is sooner than later because i really am like itching to get my hands on some uh new themed content okay question two what is the plan for the vip system after multiple discussions we have decided to update the vip system soon it will no longer simply pursue the boost of vip exclusive buffs but will focus more on players customized needs we will offer cool artistic effects for the city theme marches teleporting etc to provide players with an emphasis on honor so again this is what i mentioned in my video some players saw vip 19 and they freaked out i personally wanted to bring you guys the good news that it seems like this is all cosmetic things okay no longer simply pursue the boost of vip exclusive buffs so right now when you get a new vip level you get new buffs here okay you also get a new chest which is really nice but the fact that they emphasized artistic effects i think is very good news and again I'm a huge fan of this. I want to see more customizable things come to the game, even if it is end game, even if it's only for VIP 19, I think more of that would be great. And by doing that, they don't widen the gap between paying players and non-playing players. So this is very exciting. Question three, what is the future plan for T6? Will it be fully new units? This is a big one, guys. Frankly, we have had multiple discussions about T6. As civilizations progress, they will enter new eras, such as the age of firearms. Firearms and other hot weapons may become the primary means of attack on the battlefield. The challenge we might face is how to integrate the combat experience of hot weapons 
into the existing combat experience of ROK. Besides combat, we are also researching other expectations for new era content and welcome suggestions from everyone. So this basically confirms exactly what I said in my video where I discussed tier six units. And the reason that I'm putting that in quotes is because this doesn't sound to me like a tier six unit. Okay. They don't mention tier six infantry, cavalry, archers, etc. They mention an actual new era that the civilization enters, which brings about a new type of new unit with firearms, literal guns, right? This is massive. They basically just confirmed like 100% that they are working on this. They're trying to figure out how to make this work in rise of kingdoms. I don't know. I mean, I gave them as much feedback as I could in my dedicated video. That video is like over 30 minutes long. Hopefully the developers or producers or whoever can watch that video so they can see how I feel about that. It just feels a little bit weird to me that we would have units with guns when you have units with swords, right? Like I understand that there was, you know, throughout human history, there was a little bit of a overlap there but if you look at you know I mean even if you just look at the United States for example right as the original colonies expanded westward and you know conquered from sea to shining sea right we literally just obliterated all of the Native Americans that were there and it's because we had revolvers and stuff right so it's like it's not fair like historically like th there's no it's really hard to have both those things you know archers on the battlefield with with guns is just like what are we doing right so it feels like this is going to be a really weird adjustment for the game I I mean look I hope that they do it right at this point I mean I'm gonna be honest guys I mentioned in a recent video I said there were two big problems with the game one of them was was what I felt like a lack of content and what what I can say for sure is that based on even just these first three bullet points there's gonna be some big changes coming to the game soon like completely flip the game on its head changes and honestly I mean I don't know if it'll be good for the game or not but one thing that it will be is new exciting fresh new things to do so I mean hey there's gonna be tons of new content coming that is definitely a good thing the long-term effects that it could have on the game that I'm not sure we'll have to wait and see question four what mechanics and gameplay features Features will ROK prioritize in 2025 to both garner and retain interest for new and longtime players. For new players, we have a comprehensive overhaul plan focusing on visual effects, gameplay, and program performance. So this sounds like they're referring to the remastered graphics in Rise of Kingdoms, right? Overhauling visual effects, gameplay, and program performance. This is something that we're already starting to see, right? They've already addressed like frame rate, for example, with the new visual effects and things like that. And this is what I've said from the beginning about the new graphics right the old players that have been complaining about the new graphics saying it's too green or whatever like i've mentioned in videos before this the new graphics aren't necessarily for the old players right like luckily i love them and we get to benefit from them and like i'm happy that we're getting new graphics but really the new graphics are to attract new players like that's what it is they're refreshing the game giving it a fresh coat of paint so that way it's more appealing to new people and that way the game doesn't look like it's a six-year-old game and even when it came out six years ago it kind of looked old back then right and then they say for veteran players we're addressing long-standing issues such as kingdom ecology kvk matchmaking lag and continually updating new game modes new kvk stories and events so this is more of the same right we've heard we've heard this time and time again and truthfully i do believe that they're working on these things you guys might not believe me but i was there for the first kvk like when kvk came out the first ever one i was there and for the first like year maybe year and a half the lag was so bad that the game actually was unplayable like a pass would open and your game would freeze so much that you just had to like just put the phone down for like a few minutes and come back and hope that it wasn't so crazy right so over the years lag has gotten better kvk matchmaking maybe okay kingdom ecology that definitely could do some work right so a lot of these things are definitely things that we need more of and i mean it it makes sense that they would keep working on it there's nothing really shocking here i'm just glad to see them come out and say it at least they know that kingdom ecology it's a problem kvk matchmaking it's a problem so hopefully in 2025 we'll see some big changes on that front question five what are your plans to help returning players catch up we are continuously adjusting the return system to help returning players catch up including one commander trial returning players can choose any commander including the latest wheel commanders for a limited time trial after completing login tasks now this is already as far as i know this is already in the game and this is a system that i'm pretty sure that they 
pretty much just stole from other free to play games, right? Like for example, if you play Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail or something along those lines, when a new character comes out that requires some sort of summoning, a lot of times they will have a timed trial where you get to play with that character for a little bit to see if you like it, to see if you think that they're strong, to see if you want to actually get them. And it seems like they're doing something similar here, but for new players to get them sort of up to speed and show them like, Hey, look, this is how good the new commanders are that you missed. Try it out for a little bit. And then if you want them, you should get them. Next up is the return shop based on the return duration and VIP level players can access different levels of the exchange shop with up to 80 gold heads and two legendary commanders, including the latest wheel commanders available. So this is really good, but also a little bit confusing. So it seems like at max, right at most this return shop, they will be able to acquire up to 80 gold heads and two legendary commanders. So I don't know if that means that it just unlocks them for them, or if it maxes them for them, I doubt it will max them for them. Either way, this is very good, right? Because you know, this is one of the things that I see from returning players who comment on my videos. They're like, Hey, Omniarch, I have an expertise, Alexander the great. I have an expertise, uh, Saladin. Like what can I do with these commanders in 2024? Right. And you know, truthfully, Alexander the Great, still great. Okay, we love to see that, at least for now. But a lot of the older commanders have not aged well, right? Like if you expertise Ramses before you quit, it's like, like, you know, are you really gonna use Ramses? I mean, you could, but like it's not, it's not meta. It's certainly not meta, right? So I think this is great. And then finally, we have automatic upgrades. The system will automatically upgrade technology and buildings for returning players based on their return time and city development status. This feature is under testing. This actually is already in the game, by the way. Uh, I've seen screenshots floating around. People have, you know, sent them to me where basically they log in and their gold mine was upgraded from level, you know, three to level six or something like that, or, or whatever the case might be where the game sort of just like automatically just gives you a little bit of a boost. It's just like, okay, like you weren't here for, you know, 43 days. Like what could you have done in 43 days? boom, here's a, a couple of little upgrades for you. And again, I think that this is really good. I think pushing these returning players through that sort of early game grind is probably a good thing because really, you know, all the fun in rise of kingdoms is had at end game. And so I think this is, this is fine, right? I think this is fine. And it's possible that they also include, like I mentioned in my previous video, perhaps tier five is part of this automatic upgrade, right? We'll talk about that. I think they address that later in this, uh, in this dev feedback question six, what plans do you have to help new players catch up by the time they reach seasonal conquest for the first time? Okay. So this is what I was just saying. Uh, this issue has been the focus of our recent discussions. Our preliminary plan includes one providing a commander reset opportunity when new players first enter KVK three. Okay. So it sounds like commander reset confirmed coming to the game. Huge bad news for new players first entering kbk3 so it seems to be the case that at least according to this wording commander resets probably will not come to players who have already progressed past kbk3 that's just how this is worded to me now maybe they'll do a one-time you know thing hopefully fingers crossed if they introduce a, a commander reset for kbk3 I feel like they they gotta give old players something right maybe a 50 percent refund on a commander something like that like if they introduced such a like this feature is so highly requested since literally the beginning of the game if they did finally implement it but didn't give it to all the players who've been playing for six years that would feel really bad i feel like they have to do something right something for those older older players so we'll have to wait and see but it seems like at least for now, the commander reset is confirmed coming to the game for new players entering KVK three. That's good. Who knows when that'll actually show up in the game, but I'm really happy to see this. Like I'm actually very excited for this. This is going to be very good for new players. Number two, adjusting museum offerings. Okay. That's actually really good. I think right now, the biggest problem with the museum is that a lot of older or sorry, a lot of new players, when they get the museum, they see all these commanders in the museum and they all like a lot of them have two upgrades, three upgrades, etc and it's like so overwhelming and also they don't even know which ones are actually worth it and also the currency is so hard to get that it's like they can't even really consider experimenting with the different museum relics because 
it's just impossible to get enough currency to really make good use of it so I think this is good I think they should be adjusting the museum I think some of the buffs that are in there already aren't great right like I don't know if they mean that they're going to rework the buffs I don't I'm kind of leaning against that they probably won't rework the buffs but maybe how the museum works when it becomes unlocked how expensive the the unlocks are I'm excited to see this I think the museum definitely does need some work okay adjusting to help new players unlock t5 faster and this is what I just said before okay helping new players unlock tier 5 faster is huge okay this is huge I mentioned this in my recent video they said that possibly when players get to kvk4 they would consider unlocking tier 5 for free or instantly or something like that now that's not what they say here this is completely different wording this says helping new players unlock t5 faster which is very vague okay they don't explain anything here at all but again I think this is good helping players get tier 5 faster very good thing again we need to get more players to end game so that way they feel like they can be competitive a little bit faster so I'm very happy to see this and hopefully if you did just just get tier five units maybe they'll compensate you for spending all of your time and effort getting it the hard way now they do have a disclaimer here all mentioned plans are still in the design stage and do not represent final decisions we will finalize them as soon as possible and communicate with the community okay so again like all of this take all this with a grain of salt and honestly take all this with a grain of salt okay all of this okay question seven what are the plans to reduce kvk lag this has been a question that players have had since the first day that the game came out regarding lag it is mostly caused by large scale battles with too many troops on the same screen resulting in operation delays and troop teleportation issues yes the rubber banding effect is so annoying right where you're like controlling a unit and it's like moving 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 and then all of a sudden it's over here right and then you just get wrecked and it's usually nevsky anyway over the next three months we will attempt a fundamental code rewrite oh this is huge wait a minute over the next three months we will attempt a fundamental code rewrite rewrite why can't i say that it's seven in the morning rewrite this is a highly risky undertaking yeah no kidding but for a six-year-old game we believe it is worth the effort to thoroughly optimize and resolve the lag issue at its core so uh, look this is this is huge first of all this is very big this could go horribly bad by the way like a, a fundamental code rework not just a little tweak but fundamental code that's crazy okay and I think the reason that they're doing this is because lag has been an issue in kvk forever and they've probably tried everything that they can in their power besides a code rewrite or at least a fundamental code rewrite to fix this issue right so it seems like they're finally just biting the bullet and saying okay we need to actually recode some of these things to make this issue fixed once and for all which I think could be really good or it could be an absolute disaster and I would hate to be in the kvk that tests this for the first time if I'm being honest with you guys now hopefully they can do some test kvks right like recently we saw them do the exhibition match between like content creators for the shifting gears kvk hopefully they'll do things like that although truthfully like that really wasn't enough players to get a full understanding of the lag issue those types of things I think would be good in, in helping them fix this and writing it correctly now really quick if you made it this far into the video here's a little secret call out okay I want you to comment in the comment section below the crown emoji I'm just curious to see how many people are actually going to get here and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video and subscribing question eight do you have a vision or plan for more balanced kvks that's such a funny question do you have a vision or plan for more balance the, no we don't actually we actually our vision is like completely unbalanced kvks that'd be so funny and more specifically what recourse can you provide to kingdoms when their camp is paired with either dead kingdoms or worse those who refuse to participate such as kingdoms doing a recovery kvk due to the difficulty in understanding social interactions between different kingdoms our principle for kvk matchmaking is to ensure balanced data level confrontations honestly we currently have no solutions for dead kingdoms slash refusing to fight kingdoms when a kingdom signs up for kvk we generally believe it is willing to fight since the system allows skipping registration we will conduct surveys slash interviews on the dead kingdoms topic and launch related solutions soon so basically this is they're just saying like look we don't know how to solve this problem and uh, uh, truthfully like I it makes sense right honestly there's nothing that you can do about a dead kingdom queuing for kvk except for solve the problem of dead kingdoms right like that's really it you have to merge kingdoms or you have to you know make it like I, I don't know the answer right but like maybe you have maybe you can make it so that way dead kingdoms like from a data perspective maybe you can make it so that way you know okay they only have a certain number of active players we're not going to even let them queue for the bigger kvks we'll only let them queue for smaller kvks and then down the line introduce smaller kvks maybe a two camp kvk or something like that and just say your your kingdom's not big enough or active enough to to go into the big ones that could be it right the other thing here is a recovery kvk like the idea of a recovery kvk implies that your home kingdom 
does not give your kingdom enough resources right like that's the implication here is that home kingdom does not give the players enough to recover from their last kvk and so the way that you can solve players or kingdoms from doing a recovery kvk is boost the node size of home kingdom again i know they've already done this before but like implement level seven and eight nodes into the home kingdom right maybe level seven and eight nodes for the home kingdom could be unlocked with a home kingdom chronicle that unlocks maybe after kvk four or five or six or something like that that way players have to like earn that unlock i guess but the solution here from my perspective is make it possible to recover equally as well in home kingdom as you could in a recovery kvk i don't see any other way around that question nine apart from osiris league and grand prix will there be new competitive game modes in the future of rok we are pleased that everyone likes the osiris league and grand prix we are exploring new directions such as the champions of olympia 5v5 mode which is still being modified and smaller scale battles like the osiris league with 15 versus 15 30 minute smaller battlefield which will be tested soon we welcome suggestions for other directions i want to see a moba brother i want to see rise of kingdoms release a moba and honestly i don't even want it part of this game i want it as a separate thing i want rok to compete with League of Legends and I know that they probably can't or never will but that's what I would like to see okay they're implementing these new fresh fancy graphics let's do a 5v5 MOBA or a 3v3 MOBA and I know like look I know you guys are looking at combat uh Champions of Olympia and saying oh New York that's a MOBA no it's not Champions of Olympia is, is Champions of Olympia is like saltine crackers compared to like a, a real MOBA right like let me control one commander or commander pair okay and actually run down lanes actually capture towers actually kill minions right like i'm talking real moba that would be super cool i know that's like mega that's like building a whole new game right so like i know that they're probably not actually going to consider doing that but that would be super sick and like maybe the answer is to just make champions of olympia better I mean that could be a thing anyway question 10 i think the addition of new combat mechanism like ranged help keep the gameplay fresh are you planning to add other type mechanics to the game to encourage different types of play styles that seems like a loaded question i mean i don't think anyone's ever been like hey i love ranged combat are you gonna do more of that like look people do like range i know players like range but i don't know just the way they worded that's so funny it's like they're kind of they're kind of just like nudging you like hey ranged is really cool huh it's like eh, okay yeah sure anyway adding range combat is already a significant challenge for the current rok currently ranged combat has not reached the gameplay experience of melee combat referring to experience not strength therefore we won't rush to explore new combat mechanics until the ranged mechanism achieves an excellent experience and this is very good right I don't want to see them move on to something else until they've perfected what is already here and right now I do not think ranged is perfected I don't like the way that ranged works in the game right now even though we see good reports coming out of commanders like Cordoba I think it's cheesy I think it's corny I think it's boring that's just me I know a lot of people like it so you know refining that and making it a better experience to actually use love that and i hope that they can get there i mean ideally right like i don't want to be a ranged hater like that's the thing like i i actually you know new gameplay mechanics are good for the game it's good for the health of the game it's good for diversity of the game it's good for the longevity of the game right like i don't want to be a ranged hater but i'm just calling it how i see it i think ranged isn't very good and honestly i don't think ranged is very good in call of dragons either which is kind of like players refer to that as like the gold standard of ranged combat and you know it probably is i think it, it probably does do range the best out of any game i've played but yeah i don't know i just don't i just don't like it so who knows we'll see maybe maybe i'll be converted one day question 11 will the new graphics upgrade affect city skins as well you have only seen map and building upgrades so far our overhaul plan also includes hero remakes high definition and 3d troop upgrades special effects optimization user experience optimization and city building hd upgrades these upgrades won't affect players main city skins so that was a bit of a uh whiplash there so first of all they said hey you've barely seen anything okay all they've done so far is upgrade the map and the buildings on the map but they're planning all these other things which is very exciting i already talked about hero remakes in a previous video high definition and 3d troop upgrades that's that's huge special effects hopefully that means like lighting particle effects you know big like skill skill animation explosions and things like that i think that would be awesome and user experience obviously is huge city building hd upgrades so that means like i'm assuming this right like inside your city like building in here making this look up to date right because truthfully this does look outdated compared to like the actual world now right like the world looks way better now and then you go into your city and the city still looks like 
like the old graphics right we still have like these 2d pixelated sprites walking around so i'm excited for the city revamp i'm really looking forward to that but it seems like one thing that it will not affect <laughs> is city skins so okay i mean like look i I don't know why it wouldn't, but great news. There's probably going to be new city skins in future Zenith of Powers and or different events that are going to look, you know, new, like with updated graphics and people are going to want to get their hands on those. So that's exciting. Question 12. When will be the next big collaboration with a video game? Like we saw with Dynasty Warriors and Ninja Gaiden. It's so funny that I literally just made a video talking about lost content in Rise of Kingdoms. And then they straight up just like talk about this in a, in a, in a dev feedback. Like did they watch my video or like did my video cause people to ask them questions? questions about this or is this just like some crazy coincidence anyway we currently have no plans for collaborations with other games but we recently launched global museum collaboration with event pursuit of knowledge trying to partner with museums and cultural institutions around the world we recently collaborated with the national roman museum and if people enjoy this kind of cultural outreach there will be more similar collaborations in the future i'm gonna keep it 100 percent honest with you guys i didn't even know like I knew that they were doing this Roman thing. I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know what they did. I don't know what, like, I know there was like an event in the game where you had to like, like uh, take like puzzle pieces and like rebuild some like uh, famous artwork or something like that. Um, uh, honestly, like this, this Roman museum event, like I fully support them supporting cultural institutions, but from an event perspective, it was boring. I, I think I, that's what I'm saying. I, I didn't even really know what was going on to be honest with you and i feel like nobody was really talking about it like think about when a new civilization drops like that's a big deal everyone's like oh my god we're getting egypt oh my god we're getting ancient greece like this is so sick right nobody did that for this national roman museum thing right like again i like that they're supporting museums around the world that's amazing we need more of that but like from a gameplay event perspective i don't think anyone was like excited about it right i mean i wasn't i don't know you can let me know in the comment section below maybe i'm wrong here but like i feel like nobody talked about that event at all i feel like nobody even sort of knew it was happening that's just me but yeah i don't know finally commander updates this is to correct a miscommunication at our 2023 la community meetup last year commander updates will follow a roughly seven month cycle covering cavalry infantry archers leadership and engineering commanders for example, the Archer Commander Archibonopal was introduced at the beginning of 2024, so in January, followed by new Cavalry, Engineering, and Leadership Commanders, with the new Infantry completing in the cycle of July of 2024. So this, this was a big point of contention last year. People were very confused as to what they meant by Commander Release Cycles. A lot of players thought that when they mentioned this, that they were going to release new commanders every seven months. And then we quickly realized like, no, no, no. They mean a whole set of commanders, like a whole generation of commanders. Okay. So a new commander for each troop type will occur over the course of seven months. Right. And this is a good example. Herman prime and Ashtabonopal came out. I think Herman prime was available on January 2nd. Right. And by the end of, you know, July, we got William Wallace and we got CPO Emilianus. Right. So that's what they meant by seven months. Um, truthfully, this example is a little bit, a little bit longer than eight months actually. Right because William Wallace came out at the end of July, not the beginning of July. Right. And if we look at Herman prime came out at the beginning of January. So like, for example, had William Wallace come out this week, would we have said that it was an eight month cycle, right? Cause it came out at the beginning of the month. Probably not, but you get what I'm saying. Anyway, this is their current plans for releasing new generations of commanders. We saw this throughout all of last year, pretty much. So nothing's really going to change there, which is good to know or bad. If you think it's too fast. Okay. So that was a lot of information that they just dropped on the community. They basically covered everything that was discussed in the Los Angeles player meetup and pretty much confirmed everything that I talked about in my last two videos, right? A lot of people were saying like, Oh, Omni York, you're misunderstanding or you this or that. I mean, look, I think I pretty much nailed it with a lot of that stuff. Plus we covered more in this video than we did before. Like they pretty much confirmed a whole new tier of unit, right? That comes after tier five. They basically confirmed we're getting guns straight up. Like we're getting guns. Okay. It's going to be something similar to range combat. So like that could be coming down the pipeline with a new era of rise of kingdoms. Right? So like there's a lot coming to the game over the next like year, year and a half. So, I mean, like, look, I'm really excited for a lot of this stuff. I think they did focus a lot on things that need focusing, right? The new player experience needs, needs focus definitely desperately and it's needed it for three years right so that's huge we love to see that kvk matchmaking you know reducing lag implementing new graphic overhauls for other parts of the game these are all amazing things that i'm very excited about right amanda resets for new players for kvk3 all great things but there's also a lot of very ambitious things that they're considering that I'm very worried about, right? Truthfully, I'm worried about guns. Like, how are you going to have guns in the game when Willie Wallace has a seal, a shield and a sword? Like, it just doesn't kind of really make that much sense to me. I feel like guns are so much stronger than non guns that, uh, 
th like they would have to be a whole new level of power right and and that's very scary to me because i've already talked about you know games that have done this in the past are all dead so it's like i don't know it's a real risky business here but seems like it's confirmed seems like it is it is happening unless they you know unless they scrap it at the last minute but they mentioned that they've been working on the implementation of a new tier of unit and gameplay for that tier for at least almost a year now right so like i mean if they've spent that much time and effort thinking about how they can implement guns and things like that then it's probably coming guys it's probably coming so let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below and of course like these are such big, big changes to the game that the developers will want to hear your feedback now yeah i want to be very clear this has to be constructive like useful feedback if you're just going to reach out to support and scream at them then like don't expect them to listen to you right like why would they listen to you that's just ridiculous right so um if you're going to give them feedback please make it constructive but i'm sure that they will want feedback right these are big changes to the game and you know they want the game to succeed right and so, and so do i and so do you if you like the game and so if you're going to give them feedback make it constructive make it useful feedback okay and if you can't do that just don't even reach out to them right if, if you're just mad then just don't don't waste their time because they're busy right i mean if you can convey your anger in a constructive way then do it but otherwise like again cursing and stuff like that they're not going to listen to you so don't even bother anyway let me know what you think about them basically confirming all these crazy big changes coming to the game in the comment section below i want to hear your thoughts on all of this while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and drop a thumbs up while you're down there it really helps out the channel a ton seriously it's the best way to support your favorite content creators it helps get this video out into that youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace